Hello guys, a very good morning. I'm so happy to come up with another video on CompTIA A plus 220-1101 core 1 exam. My name is Sheikh Rasha Chavid. I work as a corporate trainer. I am certified EC Council instructor, Microsoft certified trainer, cybercrime intervention officer with almost 20 plus global certifications related to network security and cloud so let's see what we got here I did this exam recently I was able to pass this exam so I have come up with some of the important points which we need to remember it will be helpful for all those who are preparing for this exam so CompTIA A plus there are two parts one is 2201101 and the other one is 2201102 so core 1 and core 2 so you need to pass both exams so I did core 1 now I come up with some of the important points which we are going to discuss it is going to be very helpful as I did the exam and for those who are planning to prepare for this exam this is going to be very helpful so this video is for those who are planning to write your A plus 2201101 core 1 exam it gives an overview to some of the most important points to be helpful in preparing or passing this exam but I highly recommend to attend CompTIA official training for A plus 2201101 core 1 since I am trying to cover core 1 here so go through CompTIA official study guide go through CompTIA official labs and go through practice questions online this is highly recommended so this is the exam I did it I was able to pass this exam I have just tried to hide some of the information here but I did this exam I was able to pass this exam so about this exam I'm talking about core 1 these are the domains we have mobile devices we have networking we have hardware we have virtualization and cloud computing we have hardware and network troubleshooting so it was released on April 2022 so roughly after three years is going to expire but it was recently launched so you you'll see 90 questions which you need to uh, answer in 90 minutes right so 90 minutes 90 questions passing scale is 675 so what are the modules so we have nine modules installing motherboards and connectors installing system devices troubleshooting PC hardware comparing local networking hardware configuring network addressing and internet connections supporting network services summarizing virtualization and cloud concepts supporting mobile devices and supporting printer devices so we need to go through all the modules through the official book do the labs do the practice questions and go through these important points so core 1 PC hardware so these are some uh, exam objective into blocks so network hardware and services lesson 4 and 7 mobile and printer hardware lesson 8 and 9 uh, so operating system support lesson 10 till 14 and then security is lesson 16 till 18 and operational procedures is lesson 19 till 20 so here I am going to cover core 1 right till lesson 9 so let's see what are the important points we need to remember in lesson 1 which is installing motherboards and connectors so first thing is that we need to understand about various versions of USB so we got USB 3.2 this is also called generation 1 this is also called generation 1 super speed and the speed we need to remember is 5 Gbps for USB 3.2 which is 2 cross 1 super speed which is 10 Gbps for 3.2 2 cross 2 is 20 Gbps so if you see if you try to compare version 2 with version 3 and 3.1 so type A type B many uh, you know type B many type B micro so this is used for host and peripheral devices host uh, type B is used for printers type B many is used for early digital cameras and you might see uh, uh, type B micro which is used in smartphones and tablets so here also we have type A type B micro and type C so you need to remember with the diagram or you need to remember the speed of these various versions with various uh, various generations you also need to remember how it looks like 
now USB cable length maximum cable length for low speed is 3 meter for full speed and high speed the limit is 5 meter super speed do not have any maximum length up to 3 meter is recommended so this is very important to remember USB power basic USB ports can supply up to 4.5 watt power delivery capable port can supply up to 100 watts in lesson one we also need to remember about HDMI you might have seen this port in your uh, computers modern devices so high definition multimedia interface most widely used for video interface display port advantage is to support for daisy chain monitors because there's also another port which we call display port okay so if you try to compare display port with hdmi display port supports daisy chain daisy chain is where you connect multiple devices like a chain HDMI version 2.0 and 2.1 specify premium high speed 18 Gbps and ultra high speed up to 48 Gbps. Now you try to compare that with the USB, right? Now this is HDMI, this is your mini HDMI. So I just tried to show the diagram here to try to compare how they look like. So this is a display port. This is a royalty free standard by VESA. It carries both audio and video you might see this port also in most of the devices or you might also see Thunderbolt so this is having a, a lighting bolt or a flashing icon version 2 supports up to 20 Gbps and version 3 supports 40 Gbps it also supports daisy chaining now you can see like you know there are a lot of ports you can use HDMI display ports Thunderbolt now you, you see the comparison when you try to compare them there's also lighting interface which is used in Apple iPhone and iPad. It is a reversible, right? You, you now, now you see how it looks like. So most of the times you might see there's a problem in how you connect that pin, but this is reversible. Like, you know, you might have seen in the modern uh, mobile phones, you have a type C, right? So like a, like, a, like a round version, which you insert either upside down or downside up, it is going to fit compared to the previous version. So SETA is serial advanced technology attachment it looks like this so it is connecting internal storage drive within a desktop PC one meter cable is terminated with seven pin data connector with separate 15 pin power connector like this eSATA is your external SATA for attachment of peripheral device with two meter cable length now if you see here this is your SATA drive this is a SATA power this is a PETA power PATA which is parallel advanced technology attachment those big cables which we saw earlier now it is being replaced with SETA which is serial advanced technology attachment so first standard was 150 Mbps version 2 has a speed of 300 and version 3 has a speed of 600 so please remember those important points they ask a question where you need to answer it so if you remember that speed those important points it is going to be very helpful Molex, you might have seen that, you know, as a power supply, which is used to connect legacy components with power supply unit. It's a white or clear plastic with four pins. Like, you know, there are colors. Red is a five volt, the five VDC. Yellow is 12 VDC. Black is ground. Please remember those color codes also. Okay, so other one is about ESD. So you might have seen there is an electrostatic discharge. What happens when you try to touch your computer, when you try to open your computer, you touch those parts. So there's a chance that your voltage, because your body can resist, it is resistant to very high voltage. But if you touch any component without using those safety devices, you might damage that particular device, a RAM or any device, because your current from your body flows across that particular device so that's where you know cpu ram adapter cards motherboards all are vulnerable to esd so that's where you know you should have esd safe clothing you should have a wrist strap you need to have a proper uh, mat you need to have a proper grounding you need to use all of those components to make it sure that whenever you touch any component that electricity is taken it is drained away from your body so it doesn't affect those components which are vulnerable to SD. CPU socket CPU is covered by a heat sink and fan function of CPU is supported by motherboards chipset which cannot be upgraded so a very important chipset cannot be upgraded 
chipset determines the choice of the processor, maximum RAM, support for video, network or sound port. Interfaces not supported by chipset can be installed or upgraded as an adapter card. For memory slots, RAM is volatile. As soon as you connect power, data remains there. But once power gets disconnected, data goes. It is packaged as DIMM. You know, you might have heard about SIM and DIMM, dual inline memory module. So you might have heard about DDR3, DDR4, DDR5. That's a double data rate. So it just transfers data at a, a double the rate. Or generations of RAM, the capabilities of memory controller and number of physical slots determine how much memory can be fitted. So there's a very nice software CPU ID which you can install. With that, you'll be able to understand how much RAM does your system support without opening it. You will just you'll be able to understand that with CPU ID. Very nice software. SATA motherboard contains several SATA ports. SATA can also be used to connect tape drive and optical drive. Now there's also another interface which we call M2 interface. SSD can be provisioned in either adapter card form factor. M2 port is oriented horizontally. M2 adapters can be of different length. M2 supplies power over the bus. So this is if you try to compare M2 with eSATA. So this is the difference. There's also PCIe Express, which is Peripheral Component Interconnect Express Bus. This is for modern adapter cards. It uses point-to-point -point serial communication, but there's also old one, which is PCI, Peripheral Component Interconnect. It is legacy bus type. PCI card cannot be fitted into PCIe slot, very important. PCI uses parallel communication and PCIe uses serial communication. So you might have seen like, you know, earlier we used to fit those NIC cards and, you know, some, some of those even graphic cards we can fit in PCIe. Motherboard form factor. So form factor describes what is the shape of the motherboard. What is the layout? What is the type of case? What is the power supply that can be used? So number of adapter cards that can be installed. We'll, 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 come, we'll come to know about that with the help of a form factor. So ATX is Advanced Technology Extended. It's a standard form factor for most desktop PCs, motherboards and cases. ATX board is this size. It can contain up to seven expansion slots and micro ATX is this much size, can contain up to four expansion slots. There's also small factor, small form factor. PCs which are mini servers use a mini ITX form factor which is 6.7 inch with one expansion slot. So these are some designs. Header components on the front and rear panel of the case connect to headers on the motherboard. Like you know there's a power button, there's a drive activity light, there are audio ports, USB ports, those are you know power connectors also. For video cards and capture cards, we need to remember video card features are different based on a graphical processing unit. Like, you know, for CPU, we have also graphical processing unit. All those who play games or who do some some of those, uh, <coughs> you know, some of those things related to uh, kind of, you know, where they need a lot of video graphics card. So that is where, you know, they, they, they need a separate graphics card, a processor separate for that graphics card. They need a good graphics memory. They need video ports. So capture card is used to record video input and save it as a type of movie or stream media file. So they need a separate processor so that they will not see the lag, you know, whether you are playing a game or you're doing any kind of graphics, uh, you know, any kind of graphics, uh, any graphic designer. So he needs a high end graphics computer. Sound cards, audio playback, playback is achieved through speakers or headphones which are connected to a sound card through an audio jack. Sound cards are also used to record input from a microphone. There's also NIC network interface card, so which is like you know a, a card uh, which you need to connect to the internet because earlier it was not mandatory. After that, internet become very important. Now you see those cards are inbuilt, but earlier they were they came as separate expansion cards. So most computers have Ethernet network adapter already installed. Even, you know, you have a one for the wire and one wireless. So these are some important uh, cables you need to remember. DVI is your digital visual interface. It supports both digital and analog input. You might have seen this port, but most of the times we don't remember what's the name. Or VGA is video graphics array. It's a 15 pin D shape like this. 
you might have seen that in your laptop so this is your VGA cable and this is VGA port so others are you know DVA single link DVA dual link or DVI-D if you see ID so that means it's going to carry either analog or digital signals or both so that's what you know I and this D says I, I, whether it is single line dual line you might see these adapters also there's also a small computer system interface SCSI SCSI legacy parallel bus or ID you might have seen that you know those big ribbons in your computers which is being replaced with set SETA so this is also uh, we used to call it PETA so parallel advanced technology attachment so ID is integrated drive electronics also known as PETA extended ID uses 16-bit parallel data transfer serial cable is also known as RS232 so please remember those important points so you might have also seen this cable with a data rate of 115 kbps connecting external modems to set up dial-up connection this is also referred as com port in windows in windows you might see you know there's a com port so this is your serial port adapter cable video adapter such as hdmi to vga so you might have you have used like you know my laptop doesn't have a vga port so i need a cable like this to connect to hdmi right so these are uh, these are some so this is an example of adapter cable like you know hdmi to vga hdmi to display hdmi to dvi or usb such as you know usb c to a so these are what we call adapter cables all right so this is very important you know in lesson one those are all important points which we need to remember so let's see what we got to remember in lesson two installing system devices so if we talk about power supply units this is also sometimes called PSU so in CompTIA exams they use those short forms in most of the exams I did security plus I did network plus I did IT fundamentals I did a plus core one so they use most of the times they use those shortcuts PSU contains a rectifier to convert AC to DC a PCU a PSU designed for use in a standard desktop PC is typically rated around 200 to 300 watt motherboards power port is referred to as p1 connector 20 pin ATX v12 version 2 has 24 pin modular PSE modular PSU has power connector cables that are detached from the unit so they're they're also mod modular where you can detach it a computer system may be fitted with two PSU one acting as a failure to have a redundant extra power supply in case of disaster and all that like you know you might have seen trade fan cooling system a heat sink is passive cooling is a block of copper or aluminum with a fan but uh, with a fin fan is active cooling because you connect power but this is passive cooling heat sink is glued to the surface of the chip using thermal paste so there are a lot of problems which happen where we need to apply the paste maybe your system restarts automatically a liquid based uh, a liquid based cooling system involve pumping water around chassis so sometimes you know there's a lot of dust in that environment you need a liquid cooling because that fan is going to collect a lot of dust in, in, in case of those industries and all that that's where you have liquid cooling mass storage device storage device standards width is 5.25 inch or 3.5 or 2.5 there's an SSD solid state drive which uses flash memory SSD can use standard SATA interface with physical format of this device with SATA data and power connectors or adapter card format with M SATA connector most SSDs use NVMe to communicate directly on PCIe bus the physical form factor can be a PCIe adapter or it can be M2 we saw the difference where leveling routine eventually distributes writing on all blocks of an SSD to optimize life of the device so what happens with where uh, where leveling routine is going to write data properly to all the storage so there is a proper wear and tear so not only one place gets used but it's going to write data to everywhere on that SSD HDD access time is the delay that occurs as the read write head locates a particular track position which is also known as seek time how much time it takes for head to read data on those tracks you might have seen track sectors and clusters so now about RAID RAID is redundant array of independent disk where we have multiple disks so there's a RAID 0 this is a stripping stripping is writing data to both the drives simultaneously like you know I'm writing with both my hands to increase the efficiency without parity parity is there if you have a parity with parity you can recover the data so if data is lost but if you have the parity of the data you can recover the data with its parity two drives are required but RAID 1 has a mirroring mirroring is copying exact copy RAID 0 
does not give you a backup but raid one gives you a backup because it's doing the mirroring it is doing a copy of same data on other disk raid fire has strip uh, stripping with distributed parity so it writes data to both the drives and also parity is distributed to multiple drive so if one drive is lost you'll be able to recover that data with its parity which will be available in some other drive three drives are required and raid 10 is stripe of mirrors because 1 plus 0 so one what is 1 1 is stripe and 0 is mirror that's what we call it stripe of mirrors okay you have raid 50 5 plus 0 raid 50 or raid 10 raid 3 but these are some important rates which we need to remember okay so what about ram and virtual memory ram is fast and volatile memory space extended using disk space is known as space file or swap space virtual ram is equal to system ram plus the swap space pages are almost 4 kb so please remember those important points 32 bit cpu can address 4 gb of memory and 64 bit cpu can address up to 256 terabytes that's why nowadays you have 64 bit cpu because if you see the difference 32 bit supports only 4 gb but 64 bit cpu can support up to 256 terabytes double data rate sd ram makes two data transfers per clock cycle okay it's two sorry ddr3 maximum size is 8 gb ddr4 32 and ddr5 is 128 gb so please remember those maximum size also dual channel can transfer 128 bits of data per transfer ECC RAM, there's also another RAM which we call ECC RAM. This is used for workstations or servers that require a high level of reliability. CPU, we have x86, it's a 32 bit. ARM is implemented as a system on chip which uses fewer, less complex instructions than a typical x86. SMT is your simultaneous multi threading which allows multiple thread to run through the CPU at the same time to reduce CPU idle time right so it's going to do multiple small small tasks at the same time to make it sure that CPU is getting utilized fully SMP is symmetric multiprocessing it is used to have two or more CPU uh, physical CPUs like you know you'll be having two or more CPUs like small small CPUs CPU socket uses ZIF which is zero insertion force when you press that when you fit that CPU so it doesn't damage those pins you have LGA and PGA land grid array and pin grid array Intel uses LGA and AMD uses PGA you know where you have a land holes or where you have a pins on the processor okay so this is very important for lesson 2 on lesson 3 troubleshooting PC hardware we need to remember these 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 best practices so for troubleshooting we need to have we need to follow some steps so CompTIA has its own troubleshooting methodology this is very important whether you're writing network plus whether you're writing security plus whether you're writing IT uh, fundamentals even for a plus this is very important because after doing a plus you'll be working as a troubleshooting technician network troubleshooter system troubleshooter but you'll be working as a hardware technician so you need to remember this methodology logical troubleshooting first thing is identify the problem you gather information from the users you do the backup very important then you establish and test a theory so you do a research you are going to question what could be the problem so my computer is not working what could be the reason after that you establish a new theory so you'll see what is the problem what might have caused the problem or you escalate it to, to, to other, le other level like second level or maybe some senior executive or implement a plan of action so if you establish a new theory you need to implement plan of action you got to repair if the device is not working you need to replace it or you need to have a work around you need to see what's the plan of action and you need to implement the solution so after that you need to do verification and documentation so you need to also implement preventive measures so this problem doesn't occur again you need to document findings so other technicians can refer to this and actions and outcomes so this is a very important troubleshooting methodology methodology they ask a lot of questions like you know what is, what is the step you need to do first like you know if Sheikh says my computer is not working what should you ask him first or after finding what's the problem what should you do next after fixing everything what should you do next okay what's the logical step sometimes you feel all the answers are correct but we should feel we should we should see what's the logical answer which is the most accurate answer 
<coughs> so BIOS and UEFI you might have seen BIOS when you start your computer it stores all the instructions in, in a chip but nowadays you have UEFI which is a secure boot because we used to have a boot sector virus so firmware is a specialized program code stored in flash memory UEFI provides support for 64-bit CPU full GUI mouse operation network functionality and boot security because you might have seen in in our earlier BIOS we were not able to use these options but you have that in modern secure boot in UEFI under secure boot computer firmware is configured with crypto cryptographic keys that can identify a trusted code TPM is your embedded crypto processor trusted platform module which is a storage of your digital certificates cryptographic keys and hash password each TPM is hard coded with a unique unchangeable endorsement key a secure USB key used to store cryptographic material is known as HSM hardware secure module user must authenticate with password pin or fingerprint to access those keys troubleshooting very important those beep codes so they ask question related to beep codes if there's only one short beep there's a normal post power on self test system is okay if there are two short beeps there is a post error power on self test is not running properly no beep it could be a problem with your power supply motherboard or faulty onboard speaker if there's a continuous beep it could be a problem with memory modules or or it could be a controller if there's a repeating short beeps it could be a power supply fault or motherboard problem one long beep one short beep could be a motherboard problem one long two or three short beeps could be a video adapter or three long beeps could be a keyboard issue so most of the issues you can fix by asking to that particular uh, you know customer what is the what what kind of sound can you hear is it a one beep is it two beeps is it continue beep continuous beeps so with that you'll be able to understand what the problem is all right so now let's go comparing local networking hardware module 4 so this is a LAN nodes local area network nodes within one or two kilometer mostly you will see 802.3 ethernet standard or there's a WLAN which is wireless LAN it's IEEE 802.11 please remember those standards WAN is your wide area network it spans multiple geographic locations like our internet or there's a Soho small office home office like that small device which you fit in your home small business where it has a modem it has a router it has a switch it has a access point it has parental control it has a firewall everything inbuilt in that particular one device so PAN is your personal area network which is connect device at a range of few meters maybe with the Bluetooth if you connect your devices in a room NIC is your network interface card it's an adapter network adapter Ethernet card LAN card LAN adapter network adapter Ethernet adapter so it has got various names hub is your legacy it has got four or 48 pins there's one collision domain in a hub so what's a collision domain if there's a collision all the devices connected to hub can hear that collision switch is going to separate the collision domain so now earlier we were in a single room now we are going to divide that into two parts now we cannot hear everyone right so we can hear only those people who are within that particular space PoE is your power or Ethernet where, where you supply electrical power from a switch port or ordinary data cable to a power device so there is there are some standards please remember 802.3 AF allows <coughs> PD to draw up to 13 watt <coughs> sorry 802.380 is PoE plus which has a power of 25 watt 802.3 BT which is you know PoE plus plus or 4 PPoE uh, with 51 watt for type 3 and 73, 73 watt for type 4 if switch does not support PoE power injector or mid span can be used network cables so please remember about uh, you know different types of cables which we see so we have UTP which is unshielded tested pair or STP which has some shielding uh, uh, along with that particular wire and different cat categories you have cat 5 cat 1 2 3 I did not try to include it here because they ask questions related to these categories so cat category 5 has a speed of 10 Mbps 5e has 1 Gbps category 6 has 1 to 1 till uh, 10 Gbps uh, sorry category 6 uh, has, has has a purpose 10 Gbps and then 6a has 10 Gbps so it's not one sorry it has 10 Gbps now here 
RJ45 is your register jack 45 this is a small connector which you connect you know when you connect an ethernet cable to your computer so you have RJ45 connector this is also called 8 pin 8 connector RJ11 is a smaller one for the telephone and tap why, why use a tap because you are trying to uh, get all the data which flows in your network maybe use a wire shark where you use a span switch port analyze you also use a tap so tap is a device which is going to collect all the data which flows in your network so there's a passive which receives every fam corrupted malform unaffected by load there's also active tap which is powered so difference between active and passive tap fiber you have single mode or multi mode fiber so single mode has a small core longer wavelength it uses laser as a power source speed is up to 10 gbps it runs through many kilometers multi mode has a larger core shorter wavelength it uses lead as a power source or vcscls so connectors you have a st connector for those fiber it's a straight tip it's a bayonet style push and twist multiple net is used for multiple network so please remember those important points you also have SC I saw a question related to this subscriber connector is a push pull design single or multi mode LC is a lucent connector small form factor it's also tab push pull design it has a higher port density the coaxial cable has F type connector so I saw this question you know they say F so most of the times we think it's a fiber connector so I saw this question in the exam they were asking about what kind of, where can we use this F type connector so at that time you know most of the people whom you know I was I was trying to tell them what was the answer they said it is an fiber because they saw F right so the, the so this this connector the, there was a question in the exam this is for coaxial cable so these are fiber connectors so that's why I have kind of noted it down here because I saw this question so wireless if you see wireless there are two modes one is infrastructure and one is ad hoc so infrastructure mode has each client connected to network using access point so if you make use of access point that is infrastructure mode if you are not making use of access point like connecting through the Bluetooth that is ad hoc mode this is also referred to as BSS infrastructure mode is also known as BSS so you make use of access point MAC address of access point is called BSS ID so there are two uh, channels you might have seen 2.4 and 5 let's see the difference 2.4 is propagating through solid surfaces it doesn't support high number of individual channels there's a lot of interference data rate is uh, lower than 5 gigahertz now you might see you know why should I go for 5 or 2.4 depends on what's your need so 5 gigahertz is uh, less effective to penetrate solid surface it doesn't support maximum range it supports more it supports more individual channels it has less interface high data rate okay so these are the differences like you know you have different standards like you know you have standard a which is 5 gigahertz and 54 uh, mbps so please remember the frequency and speed they ask a sure short question 802.11 b 24 gigahertz and uh, 24 gigahertz and 11 mbps now you have 802.11 g 2.4 gigahertz 54 so n is the most common standard it works in both the frequencies it's it has a dual band MIMO multi input multi input multi output was introduced here at that technology where it can use multiple senders and receivers 600 mbps is a speed this is also known as Wi-Fi 4 802.11 AC works in 5 gigahertz this is also called Wi-Fi 5 it uses multi user MIMO okay this is multi in multi output but it has a multi user MIMO 6.9 gbps is the speed you might see in different books but this is I mean, there might be a theoretical and practical that's why you see a different speeds but remember you know this this is the speed you can reach ax this is wi-fi 6 it works for both the frequencies it uses ofdma now they may ask a question which technology use ofdma orthogonal frequency division multiple access so this this uses uh, the technology and it works with 9.6 i mean that's the speed Wi-Fi analyzer is going to measure signal strength of different networks DBM means a DBM value of 0 is better performance 65 DBM is good anything or 80 DB is packet loss or drop so they ask a question they create a scenario so please remember if they talk about more than negative 80 it is very bad so up to 65 is good 0 is better so it should be lower value Bluetooth uses radio communication speed of up to 3 Mbps version 3 or 4 has 24 Mbps range of 30 feet for old and 100 feet for new 
an RFID radio frequency uh, ID and unpowered passive tag with 25 meter range or powered active device with 100 meter range NFC is your near near field communication which has a range of 6 centimeter uh, data rate of 106 to 12 and 4 to 4 most of the times when you make a payment like Google Pay Yahoo Pay you make use of NFC you might share calendar and all that okay so for lesson 5 configured network addressing and internet connections we need to remember internet connection types the core of internet consists of high bandwidth fiber optic links connecting internet exchange points you might see DSL modems you might see people making use of cable modems or there's a fiber to the premises where telephone companies are going to send fiber to your premises or there's a satellite based internet access also where you, are, you don't have an option to uh, uh, to, to install a cable you might be using a satellite which is very slow or wireless this is also what we call wireless ISP you know WISP wireless ISP cellular radio we have 3G 4G 5G router forward packet around an internet using the IP address firewall is going to filter allow and deny host and protocol done by the firewall rule it's going to al either allow or block based on those firewall rules TCP IP is your uh, transmission control protocol internet protocol so these are the four layers please remember so one is a li link or network interface layer one is internet transport and application so some of the books might say you network internet host host but this is from your official book these are the four layers please remember them so it, th network and internet is similar to uh, physical and data link of the OSM model then you have network layer so this is equivalent to network layer and then you have uh, physical data uh, network transport layer so this is equal to transport layer of uh, OSM model and session presentation application this is equivalent to session session presentation application layer of the OSM model so IPv4 is 32 bits it is represented in a dot decimal notation forwarding if destination host is in the same network forward to the switch or forward to a router if destination is in a different network so when you try to communicate with a machine like you know I'm sitting on my computer when I try to communicate with a Google server so Google server might be in a different network that is where I send request to a default gateway it's a router but if the server is in my network I will send it to the switch with the help of MAC address or else it will go to the Google server which is in the other network with the help of packet which has an IP address there's a public and private IP address public IPs are routable private IPs are non routable this is also known as RFC 1918 so private IP is also covered under request for commitment so re request for comment you know they, they release those do documents where uh, you know they, they give all the details about the IPv4 so this is the name for IPv4 1918 so there's a static or dynamic address static is you assign it dynamic is it is get, getting assigned by the DHCP server there's also IPv6 addressing which is 128 bits the latest one right it has a lot of other features so what's the difference between TCP and UDP TCP is connection oriented it is making use of sequence number it is making use of acknowledgement UDP is connectionless with no guarantee now you cannot say TCP is better there are some applications which are good making use of TCP there are some applications where we make use of UDP because speed is very important like you know when you buffer a video and all so please remember those well-known ports 20 TCP is for FTP data 21 TCP is for FTP control 22 TCP is for SSH, 23 TCP is for Telnet, 25 TCP is for SMTP, 53 uh, TCP UDP. So it makes use of both, you know, TCP UDP is for DNS, 67 UDP is for DHCP server, 68 is for DHCP client, 80 TCP is for HTTP, 110 TCP is for post office protocol for your email, 13 to 139 is for UDP TCP both for NetBIOS or TCP IP. 143 TCP is for IMF for receiving the mail and 161 UDP is for SNMP simple network management protocol 162 UDP is for SNMP trap where you know you send a request to the devices or they are going to send you a trap 389 TCP is for lightweight direct access protocol 443 TCP is for HTTPS 445 TCP is for SMB a service message block you know for sharing printer and file sharing and all that 3389 TCP is for RTP so please remember at least those port numbers so in DHCP, uh, with the help of DHCP, you are going to allocate addresses automatically. You need to remember scope. Scope is the range of addresses that a server can offer to a client in a particular subnet. So that's what we call scope. This is also what we call pool. Pool is how many IPs 
that server has and scope is you know that that's also called pool sometimes lease is how you are get, going to get an IP address with the help of Dora process like your client is going to discover D is discover for the server server is going to give an offer O is for offer your uh, uh, client is going to request for that offer and the server is going to acknowledge that process is what we call Dora process reservation to reserve a particular IP address for each device so you might also use reservation in DSCP where you can reserve asking server hey DSCP please reserve this IP I need to give it to someone you know like you do in the hotel you reserve you know this is for VIP let me reserve that DNS is going to map your domain name to IP so you got DNS queries you got record types so in the DNS please remember these important terms SPF is sender policy framework it identify the host which is authorized to send email that's why we say sender right so it's going to see who is authorized sender DKIM is domain key identifier mail it uses cryptographic key to validate the source server for a given email message right so is it coming from a trusted domain or DMARC so it is domain based message authentication reporting and confirmance ensures that SPF and DKM are being utilized effectively. Now, if you want to make it sure that this is being used effectively, you can make use of DMARC, DMARC. Okay, now let's go to lesson six, supporting network servers. SMB server message block makes use of TCP port 445. NetBIOS allowed computers to address one another by name and establish sessions for other protocols like SMB. UDP 137 for name server and TCP 139 for session services. So please remember what NetBIOS is and those ports. SMTP 587 and IMAP Secure 1 uses 9 and 3. POP Secure uses 9 and 5. Please remember these ports also. Radius is uh, your uh, kind of a server which does authentication, authorization and accounting. Uh, <coughs> remote uh, Radius is uh, remote address dial in user service. I remember fully, but yeah, it, it looks like you know, uh, uh, it's a, pro a kind of a server which does authentication, authorization, and accounting. A remote and dial user service. SSH is secure shell, which is very secure instead of telnet, which is not that secure because when you send a username and password, it sends that in, in insecure, but SSH sends them encrypted. RDX is uh, RDP is your remote desktop protocol. You also have XRDP, which is an open source RDP. You also have SNMP, simple network management protocol. You also have syslog which uses port 514 to, it's a standard de facto standard for uh, for uh, storing those logs in a centralized location please remember the port proxy server uh, so now, now if you remember there are two modes you know what's a proxy server as a mediator but there are two modes in transport mode client require no special configuration but non transparent mode require client to be configured with ip and port Spam Gateway uses SPF, Sender Policy Framework, which we discussed, DKIM and DMARC, to verify the authenticity of mail server and filter email spam. UTM is going to enforce a variety of security policies and controls, combining the work of multiple security functions. It might act as a uh, uh, IDS, IPS, uh, or it might be a firewall, you know, all in one device, like next generation, fire, next generation firewall. Load balancer can be deployed to distribute client requests across server nodes in a form or pool. A legacy system is one that is no longer directly supported by a vendor. That's what we call end of life. Embedded system is electronic device that is designed to perform a specific dedicated function. SCADA is your supervisory control and data acquisition that takes the place of controller server in large scale multi-site ICS industrial control systems. IoT is Internet of Things. It's a global network of variable technology. It is being used in home appliances, home controller systems, vehicle and other items equipped with sensors, software and network connectivity. Port flapping. So what's port flapping? Means that NIC or switch interface is going to transition continuously between up and down. That's what we, what we call flapping. Latency is a time it takes for a signal to reach the recipient in milliseconds. Jitter is the amount of variation and delay, right? So latency is a delay, but jitter is the amount of variation and delay over time. That's the difference between latency and jitter. Okay, so now lesson seven, we are almost about to complete those important points from those lessons. Uh, so summarizing virtualization and cloud concepts. I did this exam. I was able to record those important points from the official guide. This helped me a lot. It's going to help you guys also, those who are preparing for A+. And, and later I'll come up with core two also. 
virtualization is multiple operating systems can be utilized and run simultaneously on one computer so you have type 2 and type 1 virtualization so type 2 is a VMware or virtual box that's an example type 1 is a bare metal like you know ES ESXi or Hyper-V or Zen server uh, so type 1 doesn't use another guest operating system but it makes use of guest operating system so guest and oh, sorry it makes use of host operating system host and guest but here you don't have a host operating system in this containerization you might have seen that you know similar to virtualization you have a containerization where you do the virtualization of the operating system like those applications they have their own uh, whatever they need for uh, the library you know whatever application needs the library is being provided so they are in their separate containers VM sprawl is uncontrolled deployment of more and more VMs when it goes out of your control it's a VM sprawl it is a it's no it's not good it is a very problematic VM escape is a malware running on a guest jumping to another guest or to the host that's what we call VM escape Th these are these are some vulnerabilities loopholes cloud resource billing is per meter utilization that's why we say pe paper go paper use whether it is AWS whether it is Google Cloud whether it is Azure and all so there are different there's a public cloud is a private cloud hybrid or community so it depends on if you want to share cloud with others or is it if your data is very sensitive you go for private you pay more or you make use of both of them or community cloud is for like you know uh, let's say I am a university I need to connect with some other university maybe two three universities are connected through a cloud that's a community cloud or maybe one bank connected with other bank so all those banks it's not sharing with others but only those banks are connected through a cloud that's a community cloud or there's an infrastructure as a service platform as a service or software as a service nowadays you see anything as a service security as a service desktop as a service storage as a service but earlier it started with infrastructure if you want to design your own infrastructure you are an admin you go for IAS if you want to uh, get, get a platform because you're a developer you need a platform and you go for platform as a service but if you don't know how to design a software you will approach to the CSP cloud service provider saying hey Mr. CSP can you design this software for me that's then you go for software as a service VDI is your virtual desktop infrastructure where you use VM as a means of provisioning corporate desktop so maybe the corporate desktop might have a firewall uh, it might have uh, updates it might have latest version whatever that corporate needs okay now lesson 8 is supporting mobile devices so in that mobile display types you need to remember about LCD so you got a twisted pneumatic design you got in plan switching and vertical alignment those are the different designs you have so refresh rate is a speed at which whole image is redrawn response time is time taken for a pixel to change color there's also organic LED you might have seen those curved screens you know with OLED mobile display components a touch screen can be also referred to as a digitizer there's a GSMA or CDMA you might have seen that you know global switching for mobile communication or core division multiple uh, access where you have a, so in, in the GSM phone you have a sim card which you can replace but in CDMA uh, you, you, you have to unlock that with a carrier if you want to switch a carrier tethering means connecting another device to a smartphone or tablet through USB or Bluetooth so that it can share its cellular data connection Not, uh, nowadays you have seen uh, there's an access point also a soft access point but this is different here the purpose is some of similar this is a port replicator which provides full com uh, complement of port for devices such as it might have a keyboard monitor mice network connectors where you connect that to a particular port replicator like USB you know kind of a hub where you have multiple connectors docking station is sophisticated port replicator that may support add-in card or drive through a medium bay mobile apps so an app is installation program that extend the functionality of the mobile device there's a wall garden model uh, so iOS apps must be submitted to and approved by Apple before they are released to users that's what we call wall garden model there's also uh, exchange makes use of a proprietary protocol called MAPI so please remember that enterprise mobility management when you apply security policies to the use of mobile device and apps in the enterprise you make use of enterprise mobility management you control those devices there's a two-factor authentication make means that user must submit two different factors to authenticate like you know it might ask hey shake can you type your password okay I did it hey, okay shake we have sent a code to your phone please type that code also so we'll make it sure that you are the authorized person IPS is indoor positioning system so for example I'm sitting in my room so they are not able to get my location through GPS so GPS is going to contact my access point to get my exact location that's what we call 
indoor positioning system getting device location by triangulating its proximity to other radio services such as cellular radio towers Wi-Fi access points or Bluetooth or RFID beacons laptops use lithium-ion battery li that's lithium-ion okay now supporting printer devices very important so printer speed is measured in ppm pages per minute output quality is measured in dots per inch dps dpi applications that support printing are typically what you see is what you get a multifunction critical uh, a, a multifunction printer typically does the function of printer scanner copy and fax so it is it's called multifunction because it can do multiple things calibration is the process by which printer determines the appropriate print density or color balance a 3D print process you might have seen that nowadays you know they even I've seen you know they they, they they design those houses with the help of 3D printer so build a solid object from successive layers of a 3D material so you need to remember about the different technologies there is a stereo lithography which uses liquid plastic resin or poly uh, or a photopolymer to create object which are cured using an ultraviolet laser or selective laser since uh, sintering it fuses layers together using pulse laser or a gub a, a gub printer is one where the print device emits many pages with few characters on each or many blank pages you know that's why we say it's gu it's a gobble gob printer or it's a garble printer or you know whatever they pronounce maybe gobbling or garble garble printer okay so apart from this what else do you need to remember so some important points you know apart from those uh, topic wise so in general laptop batteries may be lithium ion and lithium ion polymer sodium is your small outline dual in memory module HDD may have a form factor of 2.5 for laptop and 3.5 for desktop SSD can also have 2.5 for uh, or M2 as a small form factor with no SATA uh, so not th that's a difference why you should go for uh, you know whether you should go for E SATA or M2 LCD can be twisted pneumatic original LCD technology with fast response time and poor weaving angle so in previous slide I did not discuss now you can see the difference in plan switching has excellent color representation more expensive than TF vertical alignment with good color representation and slower response than TN serial interface is also called DB9 or D9 commonly used for RS232 signals headset can contain connect to 3.5 mm tip ring ring sleeve connector that's what we call TRRS GSM uses TDM and CDM uses code. 3G has upgraded data connectivity or 2G. We know that. 4G has introduced the concept of LTE. GPS created by US Department of Defense or there are 30 satellites currently in orbit. You need to see at least four satellites for precise navigation. Non ephemeral ports are permanent uh, port numbers. You know, you might have seen well known ports. Uh, dynamic ports you know 0 to 65535 are the total ports 0 to 1023 are well known 1023 to 49151 are registered 49151 to 65535 are dynamic ports DSCP assigns IP uh, okay in uh, many switch use ASIC application specific integrated circuit in SDN network devices have different function, uh, functional plans of operation DSCP assign IP address using DORA process DSCP uh, there's a, a discovery offer request acknowledgement DSP broadcast may be forwarded by DSP relay or IP helper because we know routers will not forward the broadcast because they divide the broadcast domains that's why you need to use a IP helper in Cisco or DSP relay agent so it's going to forward that as a unicast can send data voice and video over a cable broadband using DOCSIS data or cable service interface specification MFS uh, MFM you know a uh, single mode and multi mode can be used for short range up to 2 km and LED as a light source single mode can run up to 100 km and we use laser as a light source SATA can be 2.5 inch SATA drive M SATA or M.2 SATA uses AHCI advanced host controller interface to move drive data to RAM take advantage of NVM with M2 interface M2 requires no SATA data or power cables can use PCI Express 4 GB per second throughput when using NVM like you know this and the difference print common language created by HP and port script is created by Adobe fused disposition modeling is a 3d printer to melt filament 
and there's also another st uh, stereo lithography it makes smooth and finely detailed 3d print right so that is it about uh, those important points which we need to remember in exam so i have also uh, covered uh, network plus n10008 and security plus sy0601 uh, not 601 i think i have covered network plus and uh, uh, microsoft sc900 important points and i see a lot of uh, good comments on that so this is also going to be very helpful so if you want to see what are the important sites for well, please go to my channel and see i have already mentioned four sites you need to visit to uh, pass any exam so apart from that whatever certifications I have done I have already covered that how I did those certifications I've already covered that in detail right so if you want me to cover anything very interesting or if you have any comments or anything please do a reply so I know I make a lot of mistakes but my objective is clear I did this exam and I want to help others because learning and teaching is one of my important objective so I want to make it sure that I did this exam it was helpful for me that's where I'm creating those resources so if you need those that PPT please do reply me in chat I'll be sharing that with all of you whoever needs it uh, so I'm in future I'm, I'm trying to do more on this but I'm just trying to cover those exams what I did so in my channel I've already recorded some other videos if you got any comments or if you want me to cover any exam so I've done almost 20 plus global certifications and it is not the knowledge which is very important but also your trick how smart you are knowledge plus your smartness in the exam so that's very important I have done CompTIA exams I have done EC Council exams I have done Microsoft exams I have done ISACA so uh, I know like you know uh, I, I, I was able to pass all of those exams because of those uh, shortcut uh, or I would say t tips technique shortcut methods which I have learned so uh, see you guys in some other topic uh, or maybe some other lecture I think it's going to uh, get bigger so I don't want this to be a lot bigger so I try to cover all the important points so please do like subscribe and share and do learn and teach thank you see you in some other video